Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today I'm here to talk to you about FileMaker 19 and the new features you can expect to see. This is a product from Claris, and these are the new features here for 2020. Let's dig in. First up, a feature called add-ons. If I go into layout mode, I have an option here to create or add an add-on. I can click on the plus button down below and then click one of the items available. Now, add-ons is not something necessarily new. In fact, we had add-ons since FileMaker 17. However, they were not available in this location, nor were they easy to install necessarily or easy to uninstall necessarily. In order to get to them in the previous version, you actually had to go and create a portal. And then from here, you would click Add On Table. And at that point, you would see all the options to add on, and that's how you would create them. In this new version, the add-ons are far more visible with their dedicated area over here on the left while in layout mode. Once you install an add-on, it shows up over here under this list on the left. It's even searchable as well as viewable via a list. So it's far more built out and more robust of an offering. So now in order to use these add-ons, you can simply click and drag them over to the layout. And at that point, the add-on will be placed on your layout like so. All the schema that was created for that add-on has been created automatically. For instance, I see a table name here, fields within that table, any relationships necessary, the value list necessary are also created. In addition, scripts will be added to support the add-on functionality. For example, this plus button is associated with a brand new script that was created when the add-on was added. So that's add-ons. Now to uninstall an add-on, I simply go back to layout mode. Then I can right-click on the add-on and click uninstall add-on. At that point, it will warn me, but I can now simply click uninstall add-on and all the schema that it created is now vanished. Please note that the new style of add-ons, the ones related to JavaScript, are coming soon. Check the description under this video to see more information about JavaScript add-ons as we will make content available as they are released. Now there's some improvement with JavaScript integration. JavaScript in a web viewer and FileMaker scripts can communicate directly now. Each can call the other and pass in parameters. You can use your own third-party JavaScript libraries to add advanced user interface elements to your apps, such as calendars, charts, and custom controls. And there's just a wide variety of things where this can be useful and more powerful than before. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have a quick demo file. On the left side is a field containing some HTML and JavaScript. This is essentially code that I have stored in a field. On the right side is the web viewer displaying the information inside that field. You'll notice on the web viewer side of things, there's two buttons, one that says try it and one that says run a FileMaker script. So I have a button here. If I click that, it runs the JavaScript code inside the web viewer and then produces a result inside the web viewer. And this button here will actually call a script directly in the FileMaker Pro application. The script is set to show a custom dialog box that says you clicked a JavaScript button. So you can see here direct integration between a web viewer and a FileMaker script. The opposite end of that is true as well. Here I have another custom field which says this is my custom data, and that's a field here in FileMaker Pro. And then I can assign this button to run a JavaScript function in the web viewer pulling data directly from FileMaker, like this. Now it says, this is my custom data, which is data that came directly from this field. Or I could put in my name here and do the same thing. And my name now is there. So this direct integration with JavaScript in a web viewer is really powerful, something we've never had directly like this before. And this brings FileMaker 19 into another level of capability and potentially game-changing opportunities. You now have the ability to incorporate iOS shortcuts with your FileMaker file using FileMaker Go. To set that up, first open up FileMaker Pro, go to Script Workspace, locate your script, right-click, and enable shortcuts donation. This makes this script available on your iOS device via shortcuts and via Siri voice commands. Let's take a minute or two to talk about some other improvements here in FileMaker 19. Card windows are now supported in WebDirect. We have the ability to use scientific notation where fields can be formatted to display numbers in scientific notation. Here's one that I think will be very handy. Print total page count where you can include the page count symbol on a layout to print page numbers with page counts. In other words, page one of 10. 
button bar segment state styles. You can copy and paste button bar segment state styles between states and to other button bar segments. Switch between layouts quickly in layout mode. Switch between layouts by pressing a keyboard shortcut and typing the layout's name. As you type, a list of matching layouts appears. So there's some improved usability where we have support now for Mac OS dark mode. If you are using dark mode, FileMaker now displays in dark mode, provided it's selected in the system preferences. And along with that, you can get the system appearance, which is a function to detect whether the appearance is light or dark, and you can handle that accordingly in your script. Here's a feature that I think will be very interesting and perhaps a big help, especially on deployment. When FileMaker Pro opens up, you can now have it designate a file to open along with it. This is particularly good for vertical market solutions or for those users who find themselves opening up FileMaker and really just needing one main file to start their day. This is a way you can do that in the preference at the computer level. For those using Mac OS, there's the ability to drag FileMaker Pro to install it, installing FileMaker Pro by dragging the application to your drive. So that's a modern way of installing FileMaker, and I do like this a lot better. There's some enhanced security in and around Claris ID where you can control whether users must sign in each time they open a FileMaker profile. So we have some new and improved script steps for the configure NFC reading. You can scan or stop scanning for NFC. That would be near field communication tags. Then we have configure machine learning model where it loads a core ML machine learning model and prepares it for use. We already mentioned that WebDirect now supports card windows. Along with that, the script steps adjust window, move and resize window, and new window accommodate that. We also have some new functions where we have compute model, which returns a JSON object containing the results of a model evaluation. Now here's one that I know we work around a lot here at Productive Computing, where we're continuously converting from a FileMaker path to a standard format. We now have functions to do that, convert from FileMaker path and convert to FileMaker path, which will come in very handy. Now here's something to be aware of, especially if you use this particular function to change behavior in your application. Get application version, starting with FileMaker Pro 19, now returns Pro rather than Pro Advanced. If you are looking for Pro Advanced in your scripts upon calling get application version, you're going to have to be sensitive to the fact that it now just says Pro. Get high contrast color. This function is now get system appearance and can detect the light and dark system appearance in Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS. The following functions now work with cards in FileMaker WebDirect, get window left, get window style, and get window top. Year name, the era designation, AD, is now CE, the common era, and follows the year. For example, 2021 CE. Some notable things that have either changed or been removed. Support for creating runtime solutions has been removed. On Windows, FileMaker Pro no longer supports Windows 7. Also on Windows, FileMaker Pro is now available only in the 64-bit version. If you used the 32-bit version with plugins, you'll need to install the 64-bit plugins. Here at Productive Computing, we have accommodations for that. We have all our plugins available for 64-bit. And for sending email via an email application, you need to install a 64-bit email application for use with 64-bit FileMaker Pro, such as the case of Microsoft Outlook, for example. Changing the minimum version allowed to open this file option can now be done whether the file is local or hosted. So those are the new 19 features we know of today. Things are happening rapidly at Claris where they plan to do more frequent updates as time goes on. So stay tuned to this channel and feel free to subscribe if you want to be alerted to the content as it becomes available. In addition, if there's things that you saw in this video or any FileMaker-related technologies that you might need assistance with, we'd be happy to help at ProductiveComputing.com. Also, there's some advanced FileMaker topics if you want to get some training. You can go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com where we have specialized instruction on API integration, FileMaker certification, and many advanced technologies where we integrate multiple applications to the FileMaker platform. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.